Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you guys watched my last video or vlog or whatever that was, then you would have known that I bought the Elix Air Force once and they finally arrived yesterday. So I thought I'll do a quick little video and show you guys more of the seekers and hopefully help you decide whether they are worth it if you are thinking about picking up a pair. I think the main reason that was stopping me from buying these, well, it didn't stop me, like it was... I guess made me think twice or I was hesitating on whether to get these when they dropped on the Alix site because this retailed for 400 US dollars which is 380 euros which converts to 660 Australian dollars so it's a bit much for a pair of Air Force Ones and the way I'm trying to justify it to myself is that if you were to buy a pair of Alix sneakers on their site so like nothing like not a collab pair like just a straight Alix sneaker they range from like six to seven hundred dollars so that was what I was trying to tell myself like think that you're buying a pair of Alix sneakers you probably think that's okay but because you don't expect a pair of Air Force Ones to be that expensive generally Air Force Ones I think retail for 200 Australian dollars well I bought the Halloween pair and that was 200 dollars and that's the retail price so of course $660 for a pair of Air Force Ones is a lot and yeah I was kind of you know deciding whether I should get them and in the end I panic bought them and we have them here right now but I have to say now that I have them in person they definitely look very refined I think overall the sneaker is very understated and it is a low-key flex kind of sneaker if you guys know what I mean when you compare it side by side to a pair of standard Air Force Ones you can definitely see a huge difference in terms of the quality so I'll give you guys a closer look in my b-roll to show you guys what the details are on the Alix ones but here is just a standard Air Force Ones that I picked up ages ago and if you guys can see the midsole has this speckled detail um, I guess it was kind of like a custom. I don't know. I bought these years ago. It was from an Instagram page. I don't even know what the Instagram page is anymore, but this is a standard pair of Air Force Ones. And yeah, like I said, there is a huge difference. So yeah, I feel like it is... I wouldn't say like worth it paying that much for this pair of Air Force Ones. I feel like it's only worth it for someone who really loves Alix as a brand and you like that aesthetic because yeah, I don't even know whether there's any resale value to this particular silhouette at the moment. I mean, when I first saw images of the Alix Air Force Ones, I think it was during Hype Fest in 2018 when those images started coming up. I really wanted the white pair so those ones are really hard to get and this time around when they dropped it on the Elite site they had the all black colorway as well as the all black with the white swoosh but I decided to go for the all black one because I don't know I didn't really like the contrast with the swoosh in white so I just thought this would look a lot better and I'm pretty happy with my choice so my friend was actually on the Elite site when they dropped it but then he said he couldn't access the site because they required a password or something and when they finally dropped it to like the public um, his size was sold out so I think maybe nine and a half or ten was sold out by then but every other size was still available because I only went on the site the next morning when I remembered that it dropped and yeah all the sizes were sitting I got these in a men's six and a half I don't know what I've been going on about but yeah that is my story of me copying the Elix Air Force Ones and yeah let me know in the comments if you guys actually copped a pair or not but yeah I'm pretty happy so in terms of the box this is the box that it comes in and it is an all white box on the side here you can see it has the Elix branding and then on top here wait yes <laughs> I thought I'll show you guys the wrong side of the box yes there is some Elix branding here and the Nike swoosh and generally with Air Force Ones they come in a box like this and this is actually the Halloween Air Force Ones. I don't think I ever showed you guys on my channel. In my last video, I told you guys that I copped it on the subtype site. So this is what they look like. I think they're pretty cool, but Halloween has passed now. And I am pretty happy that I picked them up. But 
Yes, that is the box that it comes with, but we are here to talk about the sneak. Oh my god, I almost just dropped it. So anyway, let's get into the details on this sneaker. So you can see there's a lot of co-branding on it. So on the heel here, you can see it has the Alix moniker. So if you didn't know, 1017 stands for Matthew Williams' birthday. Matthew Williams is the founder of Alix and he's currently the creative director for Givenchy. And then Alix here is the name of his oldest daughter. And 9SM stands for 9 St. Mark's Place and that is the address of his first studio in New York. So those are what the letters and numbers mean. When you look at the leather on the upper of the sneaker, you can definitely tell it has a very premium sort of vibe. It is not the same leather that you see on a standard pair of Air Force Ones. They've used a really nice soft tumbled leather and you can see the grain on the leather which makes it look extra premium in my opinion. Even with the laces, you can see there is a difference compared to your standard Air Force Ones. They've used an all black flat lace but it has sort of this wax finish on top of it which is something you see on a lot of luxury sneakers. And then with the lace du brace, you can see that it says 1017 which again is Matthew Williams' birthday. And on the left foot it says 9SM which is the address. So I think that's a really nice touch because generally with Air Force Ones, the lace du bray here just says AF1 which stands for Air Force Ones. But the main detail of course would be the buckle on the sneaker and I feel like paying 660 Australian dollars you're pretty much just paying for these buckles I mean like even though there are other details but mainly you're paying for these buckles because I find that anything that is a leaks related when they've added like one or two buckles you're literally paying like that much more. For example, I have this pair of like Dior B23s and you can see that it has the Alix buckle detail as well because Matthew Williams did work on the hardware of some of the Dior men's pieces and I picked up these B23s a while ago. You can see I've worn them quite a bit but it has a tiny little Dior buckle detail and it does say Dior on the buckle which I think it's really cute. But the retail price on this was significantly higher compared to your standard B23s. So the standard B23s retail for $1650 but these ones here, I feel like because of the buckle, the retail was 2.2k. So yeah, maybe I'm just trying to justify why the price point is so high for these Air Force Ones, but I think you're mainly paying for this buckle. So you can see on this buckle, it's a very signature Elix kind of look, but it does have the Nike branding on the buckle as well, which I think it's really cool. One thing I was concerned about this sneaker is that the buckle isn't exactly adjustable, so it doesn't have any straps, so it is sort of a standard fit. I've tried them on feet and it doesn't feel too tight around my ankles because I find that with standard Air Force Ones, sometimes if I have them like too tight, they feel a little bit uncomfortable. So these feel okay on feet so far, but I have not actually walked in them. I've just, you know, worn them around at home and see what they look like. So I don't know whether, you know, walking in them might be uncomfortable. I mean, you could wear them like unclipped, but I don't think that's really a look for me personally. I think that would be my main concern because if you have larger ankles, whether that would be uncomfortable for you because it is not adjustable but I feel like that is definitely the main detail on this sneaker which I really love. I think it looks really cool. So moving on to the tongue of the sneaker, you can see that it has the Nike and Elix co-branding and then when you look at the back of the sneaker, you can see there's an embroidery of the Nike swoosh which I think it is nice and low key and Overall, that is how I feel about these sneakers is that they are just low-key but a low-key kind of flex. I think it is a beautiful sneaker and I really want it in the all-white colorway so hopefully they do a drop for those ones because those are pretty hard to find. But yeah, I don't know how limited these were because like I said, they were sitting on the site for at least a day I would say. When I went onto the Elite site, I would say that the sneakers were probably there for like half a day already and usually anything that's like hype or you know really limited it sells out within like the first five minutes or so so the fact that they were sitting um 
I think that really made me think twice because you know there probably isn't a lot of resale value to them so in my mind I was thinking like if I don't like them it would probably be a little bit difficult to sell them do you guys know what I'm talking about anyway at the same time, I don't really resell anything that I have anyway, so I don't even know why I would think twice. So the main reason why I bought them was because I really love Aleeks and I feel like you can't go wrong with an all black sneaker. And I bought them because I feel like it's something that I would wear personally. And yeah, I mean, I wasn't buying them for like any like hype purposes, if you guys know what I mean. I have to say, I am happy that I picked them up. You know, the only thing I wish was that the price point was lower, but... Overall, I don't regret getting them because there are certain sneakers that I purchased and I'm like, why did I do that? But I didn't really feel like that with these ones because like I said, I think they're really nice and understated and I will definitely get a lot of wear out of them. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the Alix Air Force ones and whether you picked up a pair and whether you think it's worth it. I will update you guys whether this is comfortable in terms of the strap around the ankle because yeah, it's not adjustable so I think that may be an issue for some people. For me, it fits fine. And in terms of sizing, it's just your standard Air Force One sizing. I find that Air Force Ones fit true to size if not like slightly, slightly big but I generally just go for my usual size which is a men's six and they fit good. Actually, I got a six and a half in this one because like I was just very concerned about this ankle strap thing, okay? But yeah, it fit fine. It works really good. I just have to wear like extra thick socks because I got a six and a half. It is slightly roomy, but I don't think it looks bad or it feels uncomfortable on feet or anything like that. And yeah, I think I've touched on everything that I wanted to tell you guys about these sneakers. And um, yeah, guys, <laughs> that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys really, really soon. Bye. Of course, it is an Alix collab. Wait, did I tell you guys what shoes? Yeah, I think I told you guys. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Why am I all over the place every time I start filming? You're paying the price tag. You're paying... Praying? Paying! That was probably the main reason or the main... Yeah, the main reason that... What am I trying to say? Why can't I talk? So anyway, let's get into the, the sneakers of the sneaker. What? And then 9NSM... 9N... Wait, where did the N come from? <laughs> Maybe I was trying to say MSN. And 9N... Why do I keep wanting to say N? And 9SM... I said it correctly this time.